Welcome into Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts with CPA and Personal Financial Specialist, Phil Putney. Now let's get rolling with today's show. Hey everybody, welcome into Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts. Phil and I back again to talk investing, finance, and retirement. And we're going to kind of wing today's show a little bit just because of the state of things that are going on and just talk a little bit about what's happening in the world and how that's affecting some of you know, the markets. Obviously, we're seeing the markets fall, but they're not really in free fall, Phil. There's just a lot of little things happening and it tends to make people nervous. So we're just going to chat about that a little bit this week. But first, how you doing, my friend? Doing really good. Yeah, it was good. Busy Turning beaver. the corner on spring, so we're loving that. Yeah. So, but uh, but tax time, right? Yeah, right in the middle, dead middle of tax season, so it's getting kind of crazy around here. And then all okay. the stuff that went on in the world uh, yep. makes for uh, well some volatility, to say the least, in the financial services world, right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So I wanted to kind of kick this off a little bit. Uh, my brother, as I refer to him many times on the show, he reached out to me a couple of days ago um, and said, uh, today we're taping this on a Tuesday at the time we're doing this. It'll be out uh, this week. So just a couple of days ahead of time. Uh, so I think today's actually the first day of March, actually. So yep. Yep. March 1st. Yeah. yeah. So at the time we're doing this. So he reached out to me the prior Friday and he's like, you know, Putin and his conflict is Putin and his war are killing my 401k, yeah. you know? And so yep. got me thinking that there's a lot of people who are feeling like this, right? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you're looking at that 401k every day and watching it fall and then bounce back up and fall and, and it, and it has rebounded like on that particular day, it was falling when he said that yep. but then it finished that Friday up, you know, a little yep. bit. So it just got me to thinking, though, in general, and I know that a lot of people, if they're working, like I know your clients, you're probably mm -hmm. not hearing much from your clients on this because they have a plan, right? Right? They have a strategy, but yep. for those who don't, um, it gets nerve wracking, you know. And and not to say the people who have a plan don't get nervous too; they do as well. Oh, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's you know, you you look at the market anytime the market's volatile. Um, I think it's natural to, to become nervous, right? What's going on yeah. in the world? Where, yeah. you know, where are we heading? You know, yeah. but if you do that and look at your, your investments and you see them falling like the market and don't have a plan, um, right? Because this isn't new. I mean, we talked about this over and over. Markets do this. You know, if this happens to be a reaction to what's going on in the world and, you know, Putin and the, the conflict there. Um, but partially, I, th I think that kind of ignited it. it it's been, right. You know, I've been telling my clients for the last year, I mean, the market is nervous, right? I mean, it doesn't take much it has and, to be, and it, right. it just reacts, you know, yeah. and well, we're overdue. It, it's, uh, that's, that's what I was going to say, Phil. We're yeah, way we're, overpriced. I mean, it, we're it's way time overdue. at some point. Yeah, I was, that's because we're, we're way overdue. And people have been wondering what's going to be the thing to knock it off its perch, right? right? I've made the joke about it being like a Rocky movie. It keeps getting back up. You know, yeah. we thought it was going to be the elections. Uh, you know, first we thought it was going to be the election from Trump. Then we thought it was going to be election of Biden. And then we thought it was going to be COVID, you know, in, yeah. in, in between there. You know, the stimulus packages. Now it's the war. It's like what's going to knock it? It seems as though this is starting – starting to cause a bit more, um, you know, of the markets falling a little bit, but they're not in free fall by any means at this point in right. time. Right. However, the energy conversation is really, I think, really where the focus is going to need to be because that's the yes. big, that's the big deal. There's, uh, I know there's places all across the, the globe that are saying they're not going to fund or offer Russia oil. They're going to cut, you know, sales or they're going to not you know, do funding or whatever the case yeah, is. They're talking about, you know, Sanctions on banking and all the other. Right. Yeah. So. And that's where we're going to start to see maybe some bigger issues for us here uh, in the States, whether you're in, you know, invested globally or just at home, whatever the right. case is. So and, and our inflation, Phil, I don't think the official numbers from February are going to be in for probably another week, but we're probably looking right. at eight, maybe eight and a half percent. Yeah. I mean, especially with this conflict and, and the effect it's having on oil. I mean, by the time you price in all of that, it's, it's going to be a big number. Yeah. You know, when we had already hit the, the you know, highest number in 40 years before this. So where does it go from here? Yeah. Um, I mean, some are saying double digits. Right. And that's what the markets don't like. They don't like uncertainty. Any, anytime there's not some sort of certainty or direction, it gets nervous and, and starts to react. So. Yeah. So, so check this out, Phil. So on the 15th of uh, February, so basically <laughs> just what, 15 days ago or so, right? Yep. Uh, 15th of February, 
Uh, the Dow uh, finished up the day at 34,988. A lot of times that when, when we talk about the markets falling, people, I think a lot of uh, regular investors think about the Dow. You guys look at the S&P. A lot. Yeah, both. I mean, it's, both. you know, the, the Dow, um, yeah. There's pros and cons in each indice, okay. but yeah. So it was it was 34, basically just a hair under 35,000 on the Dow uh, as of the 15th of March, right? Yep. Uh, and excuse me, 15th of February. Today it's at 33,600, right? So mm -hmm. basically, it's it's only fallen total about a thousand points, right. just under a thousand points. Not catastrophic by any right. means, considering how high it is. But that gets people nervous, especially when they don't have a plan. So what should they be thinking about? What are some things to ponder if you are feeling antsy? Well, I mean, it really comes down to understanding markets and, and this happens, right? This is just part of investing. Um, markets go up there, they go down. You've got to be prepared, prepared for it. Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked often of what is your plan for risk? How do you have it positioned? Um, you should be nervous if you don't have a plan. You know, if you don't have something in place to, to position that risk in such a way that it's not going to harm or change your long-term goals. You know, right. so and if you've been, yeah, if you've been pedal to the metal, so to speak, you know, just going all out like you were when you first started in the 401k 30 years ago and, you know, hundred percent equities and small cap and, you know, very aggressive allocations. And you're now at 65 or whatever your age is and thinking of retiring this year. Yeah. You should be nervous because, you know, you're, you're not set up to handle risk. Now I'm not saying jump out of the market, react immediately. Right. Right. But you better understand what that risk is and position it the right way before it gets too late. I mean, this is well, I, maybe I think the start that, of a downturn, who knows where we're at. Right. And I think that's the conundrum, right? Because, okay. So if, if you, the last three years, the markets finished off quite high. Okay, right. 19, 20, 21. So if you got a little more aggressive, if you've been enjoying that and you maybe okay. haven't looked at reallocating or rebalancing, um, and to your point, you know, now you, you get those people who get nervous and they're thinking maybe I need to get out of here for a little while because of all this uncertainty in the world. But but we also have inflation at eight percent, Phil. There's nothing out there that's gonna outpace inflation except the market. Right. Well, so, inflation, when you're planning for it in, a, in, in an overall plan, is it, it's one of those things you you have to plan for for sure. But just like markets, you you can't react to what's going on immediately. You know, okay. yeah, there's nothing that's going to keep up with inflation where it's at today. But we're not concerned with immediate right now. I mean, it's well, you are. So, but yeah, some of what's going right. some of what's going on is is reactions to you know COVID and the shutdowns and constraints on supply and, you know, uh, capital and every, I mean, it's just, it's, it's about it, a perfect storm of men. Yeah. I mean, it's been all this demand because money's there and constraint on supply and everything else that has started this. Now inflation, like the market correction has been overdue. You know, we, we've been enjoying, you know, two, 3% or lower inflation for, for years, you know, right. but that's not the norm over time. It moves in cycles like the market. Again, it comes down to having a long-term plan and understanding, you know, how do you attack it? Don't worry necessarily about today. You know, that's where you get yourself into trouble. If you're looking at what's going on right now and reacting to today, you're going to make the wrong decision often because it's emotional. You have to have a plan for inflation long-term, Yeah. you know, which means, yeah, you have to have some assets position for growth. Those assets in our scenario is in a later bucket. So we're not planning on spending that. That's not affecting our current spending today. We're going to have maybe a higher level of inflation, maybe 8%, maybe double digits. Mm -hmm. But even looking back historically, those really high inflation numbers don't last long. You know, usually you move through those <laughs> relatively quickly within a couple, but I mean, it's painful when you're there. Oh yeah. Yeah. I you mean, know, but it's, just... it's that long-term vision is what you have to review that you have to have. You know, I mean, as, as a 50 year old, right. I'm getting closer to the, to the retirement, you know, zone. I'm, I'm yeah. already kind of in that, you know, beginning stages of it. We've talked oh, yeah. about that kind of things before and in the 40 year difference in this inflation. I mean, I was, you know, the last time it was this high, I was 10 years old, not something. I, know. I, I, was, I was thinking about that the other radar, day. Like, right? wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's not, not something that was on my radar. I mean, if Absolutely. the price of candy went up, I didn't notice, you know, <laughs> So well, it, I mean, it didn't tell you that. So. They didn't tell me that, but you know, it's got, it's got 
all these things happening, and it's certainly understandable when people are feeling just like, I don't know how I can sit still. Like, I don't know how I can't not do something. Because I think a lot of times as humans, we feel like we have to do something in order to get through whatever. If I'm not right. doing something, then I'm making it worse, right? And and, and that sometimes is, the again, hard the part. wrong thing. You know, yeah. it, it, it's, again, because you're acting, you're reacting emotionally. Yeah. Which very often is the wrong decision. Yeah. You know, it, if you don't have a plan to, to handle inflation and to handle volatility in a market, you need to do that. Don't react and ever, do something. Right? Do, yeah. yeah. Don't react and do something crazy, you know, just because you're nervous. Right. In, until you have an understanding of the long term vision goal. How does all this work? You know, what is my plan to handle those items? then yeah, absolutely. Let's make some changes if you need to. Yeah. But and now sure more than ever, because of a plan now more than ever. Right. right. If you have not sat down with a professional and you're, you're, you're 50 plus yes. now more than ever, you probably really do need to, because if nothing else, it gives you that, that sounding board that we've talked about many times to prevent you from maybe doing something, you know, like that need to do, like I need to do something. Okay. Well then fine. Call an advisor and get a plan put together. Right. That, right. At least that's, there, least there's your something. need. Yeah. Don't, don't, you know, pull up the app on the 401k or the IRA and start selling things just because, you know, it's right. that that's probably not a good plan because you're reacting. Yeah. You know, and it's hard. I, oh, and it's, it's extremely hard. Extremely you hard. Know, right. I, you know, if, if you're out there, I don't want to say winging it, so to speak, but you don't have a plan, you've just, and, you know, to your point of the markets have been great, you've been enjoying these, you know, upticks and, oh, yeah, this has been awesome. You know, let's try to get as much gain as we can. That That's really great. Yeah, but anytime the market's earning more than an average, that it's average historically, you're going to give that back. I mean, it's just it's part of that reversion to the mean concept. Average yeah. returns, you know, they don't always go up. Double and, and digits it kind of feels like high single digits every year. It kind of feels like Murphy's Law, right? Like we've had these three years of all this crazy stuff going on, but the markets have been high, so people have been in. You know, maybe I mean, you could basically have picked an index, and you've probably done fine the last three years. Or, or right. even longer, right? Because we technically it's it's a tw it's been a twelve year you know bull run. Uh, what's it what's it got to be, by the way, Phil? For it to if, if it's falling even these small amounts, how how far does it have to fall, or how much has to happen before it kind of ends that run? Usually they they um, like the trigger is Quarters? twenty percent. Yeah. Over two quarters. For yeah. consecutive. Okay. Yeah. So like twenty percent over two quarters or something like that. Yep. Yeah. So before be, you're you're in a yeah. Before you're in a start and, to, and to get, get into a bear again. market. I mean, it was the funny thing back when we got into the, the COVID time frame is yeah, technically, quote unquote, we hit a bear market because things dropped so quick. You know, over that yeah, but it was only two months. It, yeah, but it jumped right back. It so we right just back. we just entered it and then boom, we were back in recovery. So, yeah, so I think there's it wasn't it yeah. wasn't a real what I would like, consider a real. There's bear like market, debate if it's it still a 12 year bull run or not, or if COVID kind of reset it. But I mean, it was so short that it's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, you know. to me, I mean, that was yeah, that that's. You almost have to remove that from the equation because it was an event driven yeah. Yeah. overreaction yeah. that, you know, and the way it bounced back so quick, it just, it, it wasn't reality. And when it being a prolonged do. downturn, like 08, 09, being over the course of whatever that was 18 months or, you know, whatever. Right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I mean, that, that's typically when you're looking at a true bear market, I mean, that's what you're going to get into. It's a long-term extended bear market. It takes 12 to 18 months to hit the bottom you know, then you start to recover. And I mean, that could take two, three, four years. I mean, the last decade, you know, yeah. 10 years yeah. Yeah. before we hit the peak and it dropped again. So, I mean, it's, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm real quick, Phil, before we wrap yeah. up this week, just because I wanted to touch on some of these things, but emergency funds at this time, uh, is it a good idea to maybe pad those a little, if you can, is it a good idea to, to have a little extra in the emergency fund? I mean, it, it again, it comes back to what your plan is. I mean, personally, we, we have, we use the buckets we talked about before. So now, soon and later, now is our emergency fund. And, and the, at least the way we plan for emergency funds, we never spend it. The soon bucket is really, you know, what handles the, the current spending. And, and that's, for our standpoint, how we position it, a much more conservative. It doesn't have the volatility of the market. We're not concerned with this longer term inflation or even, you know, spikes like we see now, because that's, there's nothing that is safe and secure that, that we want to invest in in that bucket um, in this time frame. We're, we're more concerned with downturns, you know, and trying to keep up with inflation. That's where you're getting your current money from, for our clients at least. You know, so 
again, when we go to through markets like this, the concern isn't there of, okay, what's that do to my income? Nothing. I mean, the income is, is stable. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the right. later bucket, yeah, you might have some volatility there, but we're not touching that for an extended period of time. So we've got time to ride through some of this volatility. So right. not, not to, you know, that's not advice. I mean, that's personally how we do it. Right, right. Um, kind of depends on what your strategy is, you know, but um, back to our discussion in the beginning, you've got to have a plan. You know, what's your plan? How, how are you going to handle this? Um, whether this, you know, continues now and becomes a, a true long-term bear market or, you know, whether this is kind of a blip again. And, you know, once whatever happens, happens with Russia and Ukraine and the world goes back to normal, whatever right. that is, I mean, you know, who knows? I mean, yeah, I, I you feel don't like- know. We, we can't guess. And, yeah. You know, that that's where you get yourself in trouble. Again, so. Well, I feel like, unfortunately, you know, whether the conflict ends pretty quickly or not, the the lingering effects on the oil and the fuel and yes. the energy, basically, we're going to be feeling that through 22. Now, I just saw in the Wall Street Journal the other day that they're still feeling like uh, overall 2022, they feel like it's a bit optimistic for the total year. Again, who knows? Because there's such a long yeah. way to go. But you, you saw something pretty funny with the Wall yeah, Street Journal. Yeah, who knows? We were just going to mention with the Wall Street Journal, the, the yeah. article on Monday, you know, was all hopeful. And it says Ukraine and Russia agree to talks. Right. Know? That was and yesterday. It's like, oh, that was yesterday. You know, looking good. Then the article this morning, assault intensify as talks end. <laughs> so that was quick. You know, obviously yeah, talks so didn't go too well. But the I mean, uncertainty it's, right there, right? I mean, it's no one knows, yeah. right? And, and well, that's where markets react with hope. I mean, that's a lot of what we saw last week. You know, the invasion happened and markets reacted quickly, bad early on. I mean, it fell, right. you know, but all of a sudden we came back with, you know, some sanctions and, you know, other countries started talking about sanctions and it reacted to that, even though they weren't in place yet, right. but the, the intent, the, you know, the intention of that was there. So it reacted positively. So the markets are always pricing in. Uh, the the reaction to what is going to take place before it happens. I mean, it, yeah. you know, just the the fact that there was this conflict and Russia was you know building up troops and you know starting to look like it was going to invade. Markets were nervous. They started to react to that before it even happened. So, yeah, and then it happens and they start to adjust it and overreacts so a little bit. Yeah. But then, yeah. So I mean, it's markets are always kind of pricing in ahead of time what's going on. To well, some extent. I, to some extent, right. Well, final question, and because we've kind of covered, look, if you're nervous, if you're having issues, if you're yep. worried about these things versus just reacting and feeling the need to do something, reach out to your advisor. If you have one, they're going to be expecting calls at this yes. kind of time. So reach out to them uh, if you, you know, and just have a chat about it. If you don't have an advisor, definitely reach out to one, get an appointment. Many times you can get a consultation complimentary. So sit down and have a chat with it. Let them review the situation, so on and so forth. So we kind of covered. <laughs> that. Uh, let me just ask you about inflation real fast before we go. So are we, are we calling it hyperinflation yet? Like we're, I mean, the definition is a rapid amount of inflation in a quick amount of time. I mean, it, 40 years and 8%, maybe double digits. I mean, right. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I think we'll have to see where this leads, but th- this okay. very well could lead to hyperinflation, you know, okay. which I mean, the, the feds have been slow to they don't want to say that. Word. Yeah, they, they don't want to. They, I mean, they, they've been um, slow to even acknowledge that this is, you know, other than just this really short term interim inflation. Type of, you yeah. know, it's a, a bad reaction to the, you know, all the constraints and everything that happened in COVID. And it's yeah. going to be done in next, it's you know, the next month months, or two. So, yeah. Well, it's no, it's not months. going away quick. I mean, yeah. obviously, we've seen that now. And now we've got yet another piece to the puzzle, so to speak, that, that's feeding yeah. into that that's going to cause even higher inflation, at least, exactly. you know, at least on one component of that, which leads to, because everything depends on fuel, right? On gas. So I mean, it's going to. Everything. I won't, <laughs> you know, I'll probably antagonize somebody with this, but I saw something right. the other day. It said, you know, people were upset about gas prices at four something, wherever they were. And people were chiming in saying, well, if you had an electric car, it would cost you nothing to fill it up. And it's like, it costs you in your electric bill, right? Right. Where, so where, where does the electricity energy. come from? Yeah, it's 
still <laughs> energy, right? So energy is affecting everything. So whatever yes. kind of side of the fence you're on from a political standpoint or a social standpoint or whatever, energy is still energy, and that's going to be the big issue. So if you got questions, like we said, the whole point of the podcast this week was just to kind of address a little bit of the state of the world, <laughs> nothing that everyone doesn't already kind of know, right. but it's like instead of being reactionary, if, especially if you're feeling the need to do something with your portfolio as a retiree or a pre-retiree, A, check with your professional first before you do anything, uh, which yes. hopefully you would do, or B, get on the calendar with one if you have not yet done so. So stop by Phil's website. If you need some help, you can schedule some time. You can learn uh, learn more. You can go on to listen to pa past podcasts, all that kind of stuff at philstaxhacks.com. That's philstaxhacks.com. It'll redirect you back around to his main website. You can also just call him at 248-888-7530. That's 248-888-7530. And the information's on the screen as well and in the show notes. Phil, thanks for hanging out, my friend. No problem. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time here on Phil's Tax Hacks and other retirement facts. Phil? Investment advisory services offered through AFS Wealth Management. The content of this program is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. Investments and or investment strategies involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment strategy will achieve its objectives.